I, w I did one smart thing, one smart thing before I got into this program. I, I decided that somebody might, might need a get well card or something like that. So I go over, make my, my usual stop over at Carter's, look around, see what, uh, see what might, be, uh, might be available. And lo and behold, Lucy, let me, let me show you this card. I want you to look at it. You put it, rate it on a scale of one to 10 while you're at it. <laughs> That's pretty good. How does that I, I, rate? I would rate that a, a 10, definitely a 10. <laughs> oh, well, well, thank you very much <laughs> for your kind. Now, I, I want this, would you mind uh, starting this over here? I want everybody to see this card. Uh, Possibly I should hold it up for it where somebody might not notice on there, but on, but but we have we got a, a bulldog on there who's smoking a cigar and is 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 talking about his uh, his moral uh, climate and everything. And uh, you want so us to we, sign it? What's that? No, I don't it? want anybody. I've already signed signed for our for our okay. ch chairman. <laughs> our chairman. That's right. And uh, he's uh, he's si he's signed he's done he's done his signing. That's good. We uh, uh, we are lucky today. We're lucky today. We got a house full of folks, and I I promise you, you couldn't get Joe Jr. You couldn't get him out with a with a that dumb M forty seven to to come down here and 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 speak. Anywhere else in this town, but to the Fayetteville Rotary Club. And by the time he's agreed to show up and do it. Of course, I know what he's doing back there now. He's picking Bill Young's brain on on, on the gin table. Uh, he, he's been losing lately, and uh, he could have sat with me up here. I, I invited him, but, but no, he didn't do that. He moved. He moved right on back, and he's he's uh, learning. He's trying to learn what what. What Young's secret is, and of course, Bud, Bud also <laughs> could probably give uh, take some. You might you may want to swap out with Young here in a few minutes. I'm I'm glad. I am especially glad that we have our speaker that, that has agreed, volunteered to come in here. We've got we've had some conflicts here on some of our of our. Uh, uh, Carter's Coffee Group. However, we've got the cream of the crop that showed up. And I'm going to, and it, those that didn't show up, well, Joe, uh, I'm sure, is, is, is not going to be uh, passing out any free coffee or, uh, or Coca Cola's up there. Uh, Joe asks you, uh, stand up where we can, can identify each of you. Bud Rambo. Billy Norman, that's good. Tom Bagley, Bill Young, and Don Holman. <laughs> it's truly a pleasure being in the company of these, uh, these folks. These people have been coming down to Carter's Drug Store for six generations. They have been hanging out down there. Free coffee will will accomplish anything, and and uh, and Joe doesn't hesitate to uh, to pass out the, the free coffee. And uh, used to could get a cigarette there before uh, before uh, uh, everybody was was told that they couldn't smoke and ruined all of our fun. But uh, but uh, that uh, just just pass that piece of information along, but we are, we have, we have the chairman of the board. Now that, a picture of the chairman of the board with a stogie in his mouth is coming around right now. You'll have an opportunity. And he's, a, this is the chairman now. He's the chairman. He's no, he's no dunce. He's the chairman of the board. So look at the, look at the card and see what you think about it. And, Hope you enjoyed, and and Joe charges five dollars and fifty cents for those cards, and that's, <laughs> that's what I pay you. 
Okay, all right. Uh, okay, we, uh, we have with us our class queen, the class of 54. It, as Joe, in his, in his rather acid way, Bill Young will vouch for every word I say. And he knows it's all the truth. And, uh, and uh, so, so what, uh, what was it that Joe said? Uh, uh, you, uh, this is the class that the stars fell on. Should have written that down. The class the stars fell on, that's right, is a class of 54. Young and I are, are in there. And guess who's with us? None other than out of where in Michigan? No, in Wisconsin. Where? Lois. Lois, where, where, is your, where is your hometown? Oh, it was Waukegan. Waukegan. Thank you. Waukegan. I, when you walked into class in, in the fifth grade and we, and we saw you there, I knew that, I knew that Waukegan, Illinois, I knew where it was. And, I, and we, we've loved having you ever since. You, uh, you are a, you are a, a gem, a true gem for our class, and Joe is lucky as a dog to, to have you. Okay, secondly, got Suzanne Young. Guess what Miss Suzanne bought up today for us? None other than pick of photos of Carter's Drugstore. These go back to, to 1976, I think, thereabouts. And, uh, and they, we've got, uh, got our speaker today. He's here, and we've got Mr. Joe Faison Sr., and we've got uh, Ms. Faison. She, they're there. Got everybody but Spike in that picture right there. And you all, <laughs> y'all got a picture of Spike that's being circulated. But, it, but she was very, very nice to bring this to us, and uh, and it, it is certainly wonderful to uh, to have a little history of of Carter's and what this business has meant to us. Uh, Last but definitely not least is uh, is my Rotary Ann of 51 years, and she's uh, gonna stand up. She wanna stand up? Why don't you stand up? I've asked everybody else to stand up. Betty Holman, thank y'all. Thank you. All of you are going to thank, thank me because I did not try to memorize all this stuff. I've got, I've got just a re recapitulation here. And by way of introduction to our speaker, I'm going to read it to you. Joe Faison needs no introduction anyway. And honestly, I don't have, I don't have to, to put a lot on, but I want, you, I want to read this to you. This is a sports odyssey. Joe Faison, to many of our local aficionados, aficionados, Joe Faison and Carter's Drugstore have been synonymous with good sports. Most any business day you will find in the back room at Carter's Drug, eight to ten sports nuts sitting around pumping Joe Faison for the latest in sports news. It was the same way six decades ago when it was Joe Faison who had the first recreation center at his home, frequented by many local neighbor boys and girls playing tennis on a lighted gravel court, basketball goal, and a bulldog named Spike. It was a perfect place to meet your friends, but everyone knew when Joe picked up his glove and ball, tennis racket and basketball, that it was time to close up for another evening. After more than 60 years, Joe Faison continues over free coffee to lend a lively conversations, to lend lively conversations, still sitting at the corner of the table, looking back through Carter's to welcome and identify the next visitor. Joe Faison continues to combine drugstore duties with bringing a smile to the faces of his cronies and friends. Joe Faison has reluctantly 
agreed to speak to the Fayetteville Rotary Club, of which he was a longtime member and former president. He will share with us a few sports yarns from his experience playing with the St. Louis Cardinal Farm Club, 10th top senior golfer in the United States after winning the North-South Golf Tournament at Pinehurst, North Carolina, and a Lincoln County baseball team, Elk Cotton Mill, and basketball and football star at Federal Central High School. Joe Faison is married to Lois Black Faison and her, and they have three sons, Jody, George, Rob, and many grandchildren. And it is my great and distinct pleasure to give you my friend, Joe Faison. <laughs> and he's lame to boot. Any fool that played uh, uh, 36 holes of golf every as often as you do, I, I don't know how you do it, but we thank you for coming. And in conclusion. <laughs> Holy, I never did like you, now I should despise you. You will never get back in my good graces. <laughs> well, I don't know what to talk about. Just, I guess the baseball is probably my first love, and I guess I inherited that from my father, who was uh, got his job with the Alabama Power Company because he could play baseball. So that fed us during the Depression for so we moved to Lincoln County where all the gold was, you know. <laughs> but uh, I, I remember when I was around, nobody played baseball back when I was a kid, though. I was the only one that cared about it. And my mother found an article in the Sporting News, I think, uh, old, published by Hildreth and Brad, Bradby, or Bradley that made Louisville Slugger bats. And it was a ba all baseball camp, either in Missouri or Arkansas. I can't remember which one it was. But I went over there for three years. And of course, it was kind of funny, though, when I got there, it was during the war, and there weren't any baseball bats. They just wasn't making any. Well, my mother got on the phone and called the CEO of this big <laughs> corporation and, and said, well, we've got the name of this camp for my son, and now he doesn't have any baseball bats. And they sent me two baseball bats in the mail. <laughs> A woman can do anything if she tries. <laughs> and I want to thank Miss Lucy here. She's a distant kin to mine, and I'm in her wheel somewhere back there. <laughs> But uh, we are uh, right after the right after World War II. Uh, a friend of mine, Bobby Williams, whose uh, father owned the Terrace Motel, where Don Holman was the maitre d' for a few, <laughs> days, uh, and uh, we decided to start a baseball team. So the only available field was the Elk Cotton Mill. So we gathered up uh, all we could get and. Uh, Ernest Reese let us use the field, and that's about all he let us use. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like the Carter Drugstore furnished all the equipment. That's the reason I got to play. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I really enjoyed it. And, and one time in high school, I pitched a no-hitter. And when the kid pitched a no-hitter, you got all these scouts coming down. So when it kind of took up with me was a uh, old... Uh, a Detroit Tiger catcher named Camp, and uh, after high school, he offered me a, uh, to pick me up in pro baseball, but my grandfather Carter had made my parents promise that I would never be a baseball player. So that wound that up, and I doubt if I'd have gone very far anyway. But uh, it, was a, it was interesting, and I played ball at Auburn, I played uh, Four years in the service when I was in Japan. In fact, uh, y'all don't realize it, but I'm the prime reason we don't have North Koreans infested here in Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Now, I had a good position. I didn't do anything but play ball. <laughs> and then I, I don't know, I guess that's about all I can say about baseball. I did go to, after Japan up into upstate New York where I had the opportunity to go down to Yankee Stadium and uh, watch him play. And I was, I was always a big Yankee fan with Mickey Mantle and Yogi Bear playing. And, but uh, when the Yankees fired Yogi Bear after he won the pennant, I divested myself of baseball. I haven't looked at any yet. <laughs> Thought that was a pretty mean trick. But uh, what else would you like to know, Mr. Holman? <laughs> <laughs> I've already been told to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess my second love was golf, and uh, of course I played at an early age, but not uh, very seriously until I got out of school and, and established back here in Fayetteville. And I was, as Don said, I was lucky enough to win this tournament in North Carolina which qualified me to get in a, a group called the Society of Seniors. And it was composed of the best senior amateurs in the country. You had to win a prestigious tournament or be a, a senior open qualifier. So that gave me the opportunity to play <coughs> golf just about everywhere. I played in Arizona, California, Michigan, Minnesota, Indiana, Pennsylvania, New York, in every state in the South, and then I, in, in that group, and then I was picked to play, um, they had challenge matches, and I was picked as one to represent the state of Tennessee. So uh, that was good. So I was playing at about 12 tournaments a year, I guess. And uh, well, if you don't get anything out of this, it's, <laughs> you spend money, you don't make money. <laughs> But uh, I enjoyed it an awful lot and still enjoy the game. But it's, uh, I'm going to tell you now, I'm 82 years old. We might have to have a break at any time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I know, uh, I'm not in any Hall of Fame like Charlie, <laughs> but I guess I was a professional amateur. But, but I've enjoyed my life as it is. And, my bride, Dumplin', has helped me get through everything. <laughs> and, uh, well, I had the opportunity to, one of my friends in the Society of Seniors was a member of uh, Seminole, uh, Palm Beach, Florida. And about the only way you got in that club was to own part of the East Coast. So I, I was uh, very fortunate to get to play that one time. Not many people do. But I'm back doing nothing, just wasting time. You and Bud played the old course at. Uh, yeah, uh, right. We, uh, was that a British amateur? Can you tell us? Yeah, we played in, uh, Bud and I played in the uh, British amateur at Troon. I don't remember what what year it was, but all you had to do then was to send in twenty dollars and you were in the tournament. And now you have to <laughs> you have to you know go through all kind of uh, qualifications. Now it was kind of funny; it didn't cost but twenty dollars. So we sent that in, and about a week later, we got a letter from uh, uh, British people saying. Send two more dollars, the pound had fallen against the dollar. So we had to send them, we had to send them two more dollars. <laughs> and, and I turned in a true handicap of two, and they put me up as uh, uh, against a defending champion who had just teed off in the Masters with Tom Watson. Uh, so you can guess how I did. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. And, that's about all I had to say, Donald. Where did uh, where did you did you get to change clothes uh, up there uh, at the old course? <laughs> oh the no, you couldn't go in the clubhouse. Tell us about that. What happened? <laughs> we had to be ready to go when we got there. I think it cost fourteen dollars to play back then, and I'm sure it's around two or three hundred now. But it was quite an experience. We went over about two weeks uh, before the tournament, and we played courses in. Uh, uh, England and all over Scotland, Turnberry and Glen Eagles. And it was uh, 
played the old course three or four times. And it was uh, a lot different over there than it is here. So, so we got bought, uh, when going through customs coming back, I know I bought a pair of wool socks and I put down $5 as to what it cost and the fiscal there gave me a bad eye and said, well, you're lying. And I told him, honey, I ain't never paid $5 for a pair of socks. <laughs> <laughs> but then I washed them one time, they drew up and I couldn't wear them. <laughs> well, I'm about out, Donald. <laughs> Any questions from anybody? You have some good football and basketball high school stories. Some you can tell and some you can't. Can you recollect some of those? Oh, I know. The uh, uh, first coach was Coach Lindsey. And, uh, you know, everybody says what a bear Luke he was, you know. Well, he couldn't hold Coach Linda's shoes. You know? <laughs> he was something else. And, but, Lord, I loved him like my brother, though. And uh, especially basketball. And was, Lukey was coaching our basketball, and our biggest rival was Flintwood. Well, we didn't really know what a bunch of outlaws came from Flintwood. You know? <laughs> But we'd almost have a fight every time we'd go up there. One one time, I guess it was my my junior or senior year, I was going up for a rebound and somebody came down and his elbow caught me right here and I was bleeding like a stuck hog. So Lukey took me out and of course I was mad and put me back in there and the first opportunity I had, I flattened some guy up against the wall. Well, after that game, there must have been 300 people out in the for you there, and every one of them wanted my blood. You know? <laughs> and Lukey was white as a sheet. He thought we were both going to get killed. And finally, some constable up there pulled out his pistol and got us on the bus. And of course, I didn't have enough sense to know what was going on. It, it didn't bother me all that much. But, but uh, I just was glad to get out of there. <laughs> Oh, well, experience when you started. Yeah, yeah, Grandpa started in uh, around the turn of a century. At first he worked for uh, Noblin, I think, Deemer Noblin or something like that. And then, but he owned his own store when he was 19 years old. And he had half of that building up on the corner where the dress shop is. And then we moved down to where we are. And when the Union Bank moved, we had the opportunity to by that building. And boy, it was a mess to try to take that vault out. But uh, we, we just kind of progressed. And at that time, I was the only pharmacist, and I was working from 8 in the morning to 8 at night. And uh, didn't have the you know technicians like they have today. And, and me with my cigar and two fingers. You know. <laughs> but, but it was nice. We enjoyed it. Well, tell us some tales on some of these buddies of yours out here. Oh, they, they're out here just to pick me apart. You know that. Oh, right? yeah, or or I'll get a free lunch. They'd go anywhere for a free lunch. <laughs> but I've enjoyed my association with all my friends. And there's none of them I don't love. <laughs> But in the time up. Well, you can take all day if you would. We'd be glad. I think it. I think it's up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.